watching the Go Cry in the Walk-In podcast. I'm Chef Cholo, and you already know. As always, we're powered by Hospitality News Magazine and Hospitality News Magazine Online. If you want to have your finger on the pulse of everything hospitality, look no further. Today's guest is the New York State Comptroller, Tom DiNapoli. Brother, how are you? I am great when I'm with you, Chef. Yeah. This is a big, this is a big change here, everybody. Tommy. Yes, it is. You. Yeah, and there's no food at the table, but still. Please don't. You know. I, 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 you know, someone asked me, aren't you going to cook on this show? And I was like, I don't maybe I have to think about next that. Next season. Next season. Next we'll, season. We'll get you on the Food Network. Now, now, Tom, you are what is called the New York State Comptroller. Now, Comptroller. Now, again, the Chef Cholo's audience may not exactly know what the comptroller does. I know what the comptroller does, but I want to hear from Tommy. What what actually does this office do here in New York State? I'll give I'll give the short version. Uh, if it has to do with money, it probably involves us in some way. So we um, approve contracts and payments. Uh, all you know, all across the state. So if you're like a business, right? And you have a contract with the state, has to go through our office to, for approval, and then you know for the payment as well. We do the payroll for the state. So if you're a state worker, we process your paycheck. We are um, the place that handles the pensions for state workers and for local government workers outside of New York City. So we have 1.1 million New Yorkers who are part of the pension fund. We invest the money of the pension fund and we pay those benefits. We are the auditor for the state. So we do audits of state agencies, public authorities like the MTA, local governments, counties, cities, towns, villages, school districts all across the state. Uh, we return people's lost money with unclaimed funds. That's often how people know about us. You that's probably, the one that's everybody the one, knows that's about. That's the money question. <laughs> right there uh so People we love finding money we believe it or not have like 17 billion billion with a b dollars worth of accounts of people's lost money old bank account that went dormant uh, uh maybe what's in the again? 17 billion Sitting there waiting for people to find it. Yeah, well, the accounts are sitting there. You know, the legislature spends a lot of the money. <laughs> so it's not sitting in a treasure chest under my desk. But the newest area, uh, I'm glad you asked about it, uh, is gift cards. Now, when gift cards uh, are not used after a certain period of time, turned over to us, right? So so if you get a gift card from a major retailer, we always tell everybody, register it. Okay. Because if it gets lost or you don't use it and it gets turned over to us, it's easier for us to track it back. If you do like a $50 cash gift card for the you know the local restaurant that's different that's not that's not um, restaurant ones no well it, it depends if it's one with one of the big you or know, like chains. a Ruth chris maybe something like that and, and if it's got a number where you could register it then yes, now, yes what do you mean turned over to us under the law if, if, if there are different kinds of financial accounts that if uh if they're what's called dormant they're not used after a certain period of time you are required meaning the institution is required to turn the money over to us and then we keep track of the account with as much information as we have hopefully a name and address but you know that's why when people see like those big legal notices in the papers uh -huh. with names of you know the bank is trying to find somebody it's because typically someone's moved and not kept up their information they've not used the account and so the bank after trying to find you if they can't has to turn the money over to us and we keep it in safety forever we these these forever. Are, forever so if everybody came out of the woodwork for these accounts we would have to return all 17 billion probably not going to happen because these accounts go back to the 1940s a lot of people passed away so i'll, I'll just say quick uh, uh you know if people remember nothing else from our great conversation go to the website new york state controller whatever your search engine click on unclaimed funds put your name in your business any organization you're attached to or deceased relatives like mom or dad may have passed away or grandparents a lot of the accounts, Put their names in a lot of the accounts are in the names of people who passed away and folks don't realize that often they go to the website and that's the easiest way to get the money you can apply right online they only put their own name in we may need more documentation to show you the rightful heir but a lot of these accounts are in the names of people who passed away and we want to return that money wow you yep. want to get it back is this money working 
for in with the is this part of the investment no. program? Well, no, 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 no. It's really we maintain the we maintain the you know we manage the cash we manage it. The legislature uh, really allocates. I mean, we we have to keep a certain amount in reserve. We're returning now about a million and a half dollars a day, uh, well over four hundred million dollars returned last year. So uh, in effect, at the end of the year, uh, anything over I think it's seven hundred fifty million dollars right now under law has to be turned over to the state and it's used to fund programs. The new campaign finance uh, program that we have in the state. Part of that is going to be financed through unclaimed funds program because the reality is some of these accounts will never be claimed. It'll never be claimed. Yeah. And let's yeah. use the money. Let's use the money. But we'd rather return it to the... Hey, folks are still hurting in this no, post-COVID era. Money, and, and most of the recoveries are between $50 and $100, but every now and then it could be a few thousand. There was, a, there was an account worth $5 million a couple of years. I don't know how you misplaced $5 million. But somebody did, and they got it back. And they got it back. So it's not quite the lottery, but you never know. But you, you never know. It averages at like fifty to one hundred. Fifty to one hundred is a typical seventeen recovery. billion. Uh, well, because some of those accounts are more than fifty <laughs> to one hundred, it's a lot of money. It adds up. It adds up. So anybody that owns a restaurant, put in there your restaurant name, your corporate name, because you never know. That's where know. there could be money as well. Yep. Listen up. <laughs> Now, Tom, I always knew you as a politician before uh, being comptroller. You were a congressman here on Long Island. Assemblyman. Assemblyman. I'm don't sorry, don't sir. demote me. I was you in the see? state assembly. Jeff Troll doesn't know anything. <laughs> Congress, assembly, Senate, they're all the same to me. What do I well, know? Well, legislator. I was a legislator. You were a legislator. That part. You're yep, right. Yep, yep. Now, uh, you went to college to be an accountant? Is that why you're in this job now? I, I went to Hofstra, and I was a history major. History major. And my master's degree is in management. Now, you know, people ask me that question a lot. The, the controller is also an elective off, elected office. Yes. The controllers have... Congratulations. Thank you very Second much. Second term, third term? <clears throat> fourth time. Fourth, term. fourth time by the voters. Very no, proud I see. To say. You get an inauguration every time. Well... It's a way I to, saw it, that. It's a way to say thank you to people, no one, right? No one invited me this time. I well, Joe Galante, he should have invited Joey. you. Where are you watching, Joe? <laughs> he better be watching. <laughs> so, you know, the, when you look at who's been controller, it's always folks who have come up through the political process because it is an elective office. You know, I'm a Democrat, ran on the Democratic right. ticket. The job, though, Chris, if I can call you Chris, since please, we're all sir. friends. Please, sir. Um, it's really a management job, right? Because you right. just heard the different functions. Yeah, we, we do have accountants uh, and trained auditors, but we also have investment people that are managing that pension fund money. We do have folks that are expert in state operations, payroll, and, uh, and, and accounting and so on. So no one person is going to be an accountant, and a Wall Street professional, a trained government operations person. Uh, it, so it my job is really to manage all those different functions and to hire the experts in all those areas. So remember right. when I when I first became controller, my predecessor had to resign. He got into trouble. Yes. And it was up to the legislature to fill the vacancy. It was a little controversial, you remember, at the time. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, but I was in the legislature. A lot of those folks knew me for 20 years. I'd been in that right. long. And they felt that I was someone they could trust, that someone who understood the importance of openness, transparency, restoring integrity to the controller's office because you need to trust the person handling the money. And they were the ones that, that uh, thankfully gave me this opportunity. And, and as I said, four times now, the voters of New York State have given me that opportunity. You know, you know I don't live in New York. I mean, I, I don't live in the city, but I, obviously I'm a resident of New York. And I, and I typically pull the R level. But I will tell you, I've never been in the, in the booth and not pulled the lever from my man because when you just said something about integrity – and, I, and again, I only know this about being around you as a man. You have a, an incredible integrity, like as a man. And, and again, fortunately or unfortunately, in the history that I've had as a chef, I have been around politicians. I've had to see a lot of different things. I mean, the place I worked for was owned by Nassau County at the time. So, you know, yeah. so I got to see a lot of people. And the thing that I see about you is that you're always there. You're always tangible. And I think that that's probably what people like most about the guy that's watching over their money is that he's available and he's there. I never heard about anybody getting money back until you became the comptroller. Like, I'm sure that that wasn't the old comptroller's biggest thing, but it seems like that's a big part of 
what you've done to keep yourself. We try to promote because it makes a difference to people. Their lives. People love yeah. you. No, they love you for well, that. Well, I appreciate you saying you're 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 being too kind. But you know what? I grew up here on Long Island. My parents were working people. Good Republicans, by the way. Yes, uh, sir. And they, they, they really taught me basic values. You know, a lot of folks get in trouble in my line of work. Yeah. And it always boggles my mind because... Power's a hard thing to handle, my well, friend. Well, you know, it's pretty simple what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And somehow people lose sight of that. I mean, it's not just in government, right? It happens in business. It happens in any institution, you know. Seven deadly sins are alive yeah, and well, and greed but, is always there, my But, brother. you know, my, my parents were simple people. They set the right example. Yeah. And my mother particularly, she's been gone a long time, but she... Made sure I never got a swelled head. Remember, I was elected first at age 18, remember, 18. to the Board of Education. That's right. And I was on the front page of Newsday in 1972. Wow. And my mother said, you know better than anybody else. I don't care that you're she on the front page. She told you that page. right oh, away. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your no, mom was a good as, cook? Uh, I'm gonna she go was right a good no. It. She was a good cook. Yeah. No, You're I, obviously Italian, right? Very Italian. Yes, sir. Yeah, no. She was... Uh, although, I'm not into lentils, and she cooked lentil soup a lot. Italians like lentils, you know. That, that, wasn't, lentils. that wasn't my thing. And she always made us uh, have liver and onions once a month. Also, not my thing. It's Sorry. an old school thing. It's, my, a, it's my, an old school thing. My dad loved it. My mom, oh, it wasn't once a month, but we had to eat it. Yeah, had, yeah, had to we eat had it. to no, eat but, it. But her best dish was uh, eggplant parmesan. Wow. And she has, she's been gone a number of years now, uh, over 30 years. And I remember she died suddenly. Uh, did you ever cook with her, Tom? No, my brother did. I, I'm pleased. Right. I, you I don't, 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 don't know. It's not me. But, you know, after she passed, because, you know, she always cooked stuff and put it in the freezer. Yeah. There was a big tray of eggplant parmesan still in the freezer. That's like the Sopranos and one, and one, and one, Yeah. And one Karen of the, Ziti. And one of the, yeah. And one you of don't the, watch Sopranos, do you, Tommy? No, I don't like certain characterizations of my people. But <laughs> anyway, people. People, people, people love the show, whatever. Uh, Karen Ziti. Uh, but yeah, the Ziti is, uh, brings up another thought, but I won't get into that. But what, our last ritual, but my brother, my father, myself, was when we, and we, we put it off for a long time. But we finally said we have to we have to heat, eat. heat up that uh, eggplant parm, and that was that was almost like a, a special taste, moment. Never to, tasted better, right? Never tasted better, no matter where I go. But your mom would would slice the eggplant, and salt it, and let it dry out, right? She, she'd put it in 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 a colander, yes, and layer it with paper towel. And then put a plate on top, and then put the iron on top of the plate to, to really squeeze out the, the the moisture. All the more, and that would get it like less bitter. Every you know, old yes. school guys know that. Yeah. Yes, it took and a lot of time, but she made it look easy. And that's how you get crispy eggplant. You ever have that soggy eggplant? It's not been dried out; just sliced and breaded immediately. Exactly right. No, she did it all school, and 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 I've it's never. Never tasted better. Never quite had it that that same way. But that's that's my nostalgia dish of, of growing up. You know, and I, like I said before about about integrity. You know, like there's just things that stand out to me. And again, I meet a lot of politicians, but I'm going to describe one uh, Columbus Day uh, parade. Now, the town of Huntington has a has a has a has a, a, a three day festival in the fall that ends on Columbus Day on the Monday, where they have their parade, and. Uh, my twins uh, were probably about seven, so they were still very little. I would have to hold them in each one of my hands. And uh, I was doing, we would, you know, the folks that I worked for at the time, John and Jed, they, they did some things at this festival. So we were working, and they said, oh, the parade's going to come down. And, you know, the kids, they want to see the parade. So I, I remember running up to the street, and uh, it was you and Joey and the other people were, like, leading the parade. And this, this is, a, this is a, this, uh, you, you might even remember this. I'm standing there on the side of the road. Now, Chef Trollo is quite quite the scene. You know, I think I have a tank top on. You know, I'm looking very, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking not so approachable for, for most people. You walk, you leave the, you like walk off the line of, of the, of the, of the, you know, the parade is moving and you like, you step out. Your security guys are like, I see everyone's like, they're going to tell you where you're going. You come right over to me. You shake my hand. You shake the two boys' hand. Honestly, I would die for you from that moment on, my uh, brother. Anything uh, you ever needed from Chef Troll. No, and thank I just, you. And those are the things in life that you know that make a person stand out yeah. in my eyes. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's how you stood out for me. Oh, thanks. You know? Well, you and I connected when we first met, God, over 20 years ago. And, you know, you're real. You're genuine. And <laughs> I've just been uh, just so happy that... Our paths always seem to cross, you know, yeah. wherever you've gone, <laughs> turn around and we're in the same place. And what's well, going to lead us into our diner? Talk yeah. Okay. Next, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, again, you said you're not much of a cook, so you got to go out a lot all the time and you're out. So 
I used to run a, a, a very famous diner in Nassau County called the Landmark Diner. Sure. In its second its iteration. Second yep. iteration. Yep. I was looking for that word. Thank yep. you for helping me. And uh, it's a two. It's a New York's only two-level diner. Elevators, the whole thing. And here I am one day walking through the dining room, and there's my brother sitting down enjoying his food at the diner. Now, uh, you still go to the Landmark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, look, when you're running around doing different events and, you, and you're heading home, what's the place that's serving later? I mean, you right. know, it, it's, it's going to be the diners, and especially during COVID, a lot of restaurants closed even earlier. Yeah. So most, not all, even some of the diners close a little earlier. Sure. But Landmark definitely is on the list. I mean, look. Long Island is the land of diners, yeah, really. right? And there are great choices out there, you know. So, um, you know, today I, I started out at the Seven Seas Diner in Great Neck, where I live. And, awesome diner. And, and been there a long time. Long and, of time. course, before I came to be with you, uh, you arranged to have uh, the airport diner right here on Kakama, <laughs> so I stopped there. So You were, you were at the airport yeah, diner so just it's, now? It's a two it's a two-diner day already for me. So so when you go to it, are you like, when you go to the diner, do you have a go-to? Are you like always breakfast? Or no, you'll have no. at the right, you'll eat appropriate I mean, it's, times. It's, it's more typical a breakfast, like at a breakfast meeting this morning or, or dinner. I mean, close home to me, you know, Seven Seas, uh, Omega in New Hyde Park, uh -huh. Landmark, you know, as you mentioned. Um, you're you know, an omelet the, guy, you're a pancake guy. Oh, you it mix really it up. depends. I mean, it really depends. It depends on my mood. I, I am I am easily a pancake, okay. waffle, French toast. But, you know, I do scrambled eggs. You're not a creature of habit where you have to have the same thing every time. No, no. Although I'm noticing it's harder. I sometimes like poached eggs. Not every diner will do poached eggs anymore. It's a skill. It, well, yeah. because they claim people <laughs> complain it's too soft, too hard. I don't know. I, I like I like poached, but Me too. Um, a little but, vinegar in the water, Tommy. That's that makes the a secret. Difference? It makes the egg white coagulate uh, oh, better, okay. and it gives a more fuller poached. All right, meat. I learned something. But the old Westbury Diner, uh, and those folks also have the Williston uh, Townhouse Diner, Carl Place Diner. You awesome know, diner. Another, another place to stop. I mean, look, Long Island. You know, so many great choices. That Sweet Hollow, if I'm out in the Huntington area, that's been a place I've gone to a lot. So I, Sweet I always Hollow's closed. I think Tommy. No, that's I was the there. one on 110. Yeah, I was there not long oh, ago. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, one of those diners on 110 close. So, but now, but now we also know you're traveling from Long Island to Albany quite yeah. often. Yep, now, yep. now, what's the diner scene from? Let's just say you know Long Island to Albany. Like, what is there go tos? For you? Are you go to do you go to the Roscoe Diner? The famous Roscoe the fa Diner. Of course, the well, famous of course. Roscoe Diner. <laughs> not many diners on se Route 17. No, that's we, right. We, we we do go there. Um. Look, uh, the diners all across the state are still go-to places, but I have to say, no offense to our friends who are watching us not from Long Island, I do compare wherever I go to Long Island. You have to. And I have to say, there are many good diners out there. I'm being chauvinistic, but Long Island is still the gold standard. Still for the diners. best. There's no, there's no doubt. But, but there are many. Look, and COVID has been a problem. You know, you mentioned uh, diners closing. One of the places on the through we go to all times was the Airmont Diner uh, in Rockland County, and that closed. It, it was a victim of COVID. Never you know, opened the, up again. Never opened up again. Well, they did, and then and then they ended up closing permanently. One of the diners I went to um, a couple times in Auburn, New York, way upstate. Uh, the Hunter Diner, uh, I just saw they closed at the end of December. Wow. Now, that diner had been there forever. Now, why do I mention that diner? The Hunter family uh, owned it at one point, not, not anymore. Uh, the Hunter family, uh, the, the daughter of the owners, uh, was the first wife of President Biden. So people talk about the Hunter kids Biden. kids named after that? The kid's name, because that was the mother's maiden name, was Get Hunter. Out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's a good fact. And, and the, yeah, and that one just closed. Now, look, I'm in Albany a lot. So we, we have some Albany spots that we go to. Uh, there's the Pearl Street Diner, which is right by my office. Wonderful people run that. Wonderful family. They still got like the jukebox on the wall? No, that that's diner? a newer spot. That's a it's newer, a newer spot. kind of diner. Some some diners, but that's kind of a dying breed. Of, it's totally. Of, of that's why I asked. Those. Yeah. If you, if you have a jukebox, you know you're it's all school. Place. You, you know, know it's an old the Capital City Diner is another place I go to a lot. Um, Blue Ribbon Diner in Schenectady. So there are a fair Blue number Ribbon's of a Latham, diner. Latham 76. So the Albany areas uh, got a lot. But um, especially after Airmont closed, um, another place off the thruway I've gone to, uh, the Saugerties Diner, which okay. is old school. 
I'm trying to remember. I don't know if they have. I don't think they got the jukebox, but but you know, shaped the, like the, a fra- the most... any, anything shaped like a freight car still. Well, you go but that's to? The, you know the Mineola Diner. Oh, that's the classic diner. It's still open, right? That's still open. Not, yeah, that's not Gus's diner. That's the Mineola. There was a Gus's too, right? There was a Gus's diner in that area. I think so, but this is the one that's on, on the corner. Jer- Jericho and, and, and Willis. Man. That yeah. that one still that's open, right? Been there for 150 years, or feels like it, right? That's that's the old school. With that's the, an old car. That metal yeah. Look. yeah, yeah. You know, there's really like one company that makes that builds all these places. Is it still in business? Yeah, they're in New Rochelle. Oh, okay. The Raffle is the name of the company. I, okay. I visited there. They build them there, and like the landmark was built in New Rochelle, and then they put it on three giant trucks. And they modulely bring it, and they put wow. it together here. I've been to the factory; it's an amazing place. Wow! Uh, Phil DeRaffle, you know, still the father, still works there. You know, he still works with like a whiteboard wow. and like you know, like very, very Old no school. computers. All school. Uh, Lou, Lou Tiglius, he's one of the three guys that owns a landmark diner. And uh, when we were building, we would we would go visit the raffle. He goes, you, know, you want to see the progress of this or the progress yeah. of that? You know, they're, they're building the boost today. They're doing that. And it's such an old school business. Where is that? 4.30 at the end of the day, Johnny from the auto shop, Jimmy, uh, uh, the security guard from the library, two or three other guys in their 70s would come to Phil's office, sit down. The bottle of Tangeray or the bottle of vodka will come out of the bottom. Yeah. Guys drinking out of jelly jaws. You know, not drinking to get drunk. They'd have one drink. They'd talk about the day and everybody went home. And yeah. it was like, I couldn't believe this culture still existed. Thank and God. it just bleeds into the – it's what the diner's all about. Well, the diner – you know, as you know, they're family enterprises. And they, they take a great deal of pride. You know, I always find the service is 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 really good. People are friendly. Friendly. You know, uh, and there's a there's kind of a diner everywhere. I mean, in Buffalo, if I'm by the airport, the Olympic Diner. There was an Olympic Diner. I think someone told me it was closing in Kingston, uh, and they're all family enterprises, and that that makes it nice. Now, do you ever like? Are you ever say? I say because now you just said Albany. You, you rattled off like three or four diners just in Albany. Now, yep. are you like? Uh, you know what? Uh, I want to. I want to. We're gonna go out for eat, but I feel like having. You know, poached eggs. Is there one you're gonna go to one diner for that, or one diner for the gyro, one diner for the open? Are you? Let's say, are you an open faced turkey guy or a turkey club guy? I am. <laughs> no, I am. I am a or straight. Neither. No, I'm a straight turkey with stuffing the dinner. The dinner, right? Yeah, they I mean, still do it too. They do it. They still do it. I they mean, do I'll do it. the open face sometimes, but but. Um, but I'll do turkey, not roast beef on the. Not open roast face. beef. But I, yeah. I like, I like, I like, I like the dressing. And and you know, every place does the the, the stuffing or whatever you call the dressing stuffing differently. Some Absolutely. are a little sweet, some are a little more savory. I kind of like the savory more than the Me sweet. Too. Sage. But sage. Sage. Yeah, 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 yeah. A yeah. little bit. But spice. but I have to say, turkey dinners are a pretty regular go to. Um, I really like fish, so. My favorite is Scrod. Diner Scrod is great, but not Killer. every not every diner does the Scrod. Not anymore. So that's where sometimes I know which ones have the Scrod almost every day. Uh, other places will have swordfish. Right. A lot of places don't have swordfish either. So you eat swordfish? I do. I like. Why well, you telling me I shouldn't? I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, chef. Slow, is there something slow. I need to know? <laughs> Did I tell you? It, it's a slow mover. You know, you think of the swordfish might be that thing that jumps out of the water with the big, but it's not. It's a massive animal, and it's a slow mover, so it lives on the bottom. All right, so, all right, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah, so sometimes it has things in it that made me not want to eat it. But I used to, I eat, I mean, the swordfish is wonderful, but I don't, sometimes seeing the raw product, you, you stay away from that. But I shouldn't Okay, well, we've all, le- we've all learned that. something today. Scrap card, yeah. you don't have to worry about that. Small fish moves really quick. <laughs> I, I will keep that in mind. So I'll stay away from catfish also then. You, ca- oh, catfish is another one. You know, uh, like Orthodox Jews can't eat catfish. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, too dirty. Yeah, too okay. dirty. But swordfish right. either. Any so those slow moving bottom feeders, yeah, they can't do that. Yeah, okay. gotta be quick. Sport. But fish. you can eat flounder. Again, again, it is. It does. It is on the bottom, but it it, it lives on the bottom, but it moves faster. I it guess. Moves so faster. it has maybe the the gills. 
very again uh working at crest hollow country club and we have our own you know we have our own supervision there we have yeah. a partner uh so i did have the ability to learn a lot more about uh kosher cuisine and glock yeah. kosher cuisine yeah things that i didn't know about because you know again oh yeah you know no pork no no no, no. it's so deep you know yeah I mean, the strawberries asparagus a lot of things that they'll stay away from because of the idea that something could get in like the oh, spe- like a okay. little bug that you couldn't see sure again, sure sure you know Religion is, 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 is a heavy thing. So when yeah. you want to follow the rules, you got to follow them you gotta all the way. you got to follow the rules. All well, the way. See, I learned something today. So I will not be having swordfish anytime soon. See, our God is good. <laughs> we go on Sunday. We just say we're sorry and we're okay. We're, we're forgiven of all our sins. It's Can I mention easier. another diner that's worth Please. going? Now, the, the, uh, 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 again, uh, uh, true confession, openness. Uh, there is a diner in Jersey that sometimes we go to. TikTok. The no, the uh, State Line Diner in Mawa, is awesome? which is which which is r- right off of um, when you're going up t- towards the throughway. If you go at George Washington Bridge, don't ask me the road in Jersey. Okay. But but it, it, it's it's literally paces away from getting back on the throughway. Uh, they've got great specials. They're always packed. Um, so, so they're like one of these diners that's like landmark, doing like newer things. You know what I mean? And they always seem to be open. Again, nice people run it. Uh, it's Thank real, God really they're all clean. pretty strong again. Yeah, no, I mean, look, a lot of the diners, uh, really, I mean, COVID was a really tough time. Well, a, lot, a lot of them COVID, had to get the federal money to, you know, the and, loans to keep open. And it wasn't even, you know, the hard part about, again, if I could just interject, yeah. it, you have to look at the clientele of the diner. And again, if you're working in one, it's it's a lot of people that are retired. Okay. Yeah. So it's when you have, when, 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 where most of your group is an older group and that, and I mean the ones that come every, every day for lunch, every day for breakfast. Right, right. And it, you know, we would have folks come to the landmark three times a day, every day. And that's not, really? that's no exaggeration. Wow. Yeah. But with the scare of COVID and right. the idea that you couldn't be around people, yeah. listen, old people don't want to die. Right. They're right. already near the end, you know, and then why go die over a grilled cheese sandwich? You know what I mean? So, the diners was hard to bring people back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what the issue was for a long time. Yeah. But uh, thank God, thank goodness that I see, you know, that coming back and the diners are coming but stronger. But it's also value. I mean, look, prices have got, oh, by the way, I'm forgetting. Eggs? The, no, the Great Neck Diner. I've got to, before I go into the course, the, the, the Great Neck Diner, which is in the old Fredericks. The old Fredericks. Uh, yeah. that's, they're wonderful people there, too. That's another go-to. Is place that your number one? I can't pick a number one because I, I go to, you know, so many of the local ones. It wouldn't be fair to pick a number okay, one. Tom. No, but but it got to put in a plug for Great Neck Diner, which is on Grace Avenue and Bond Street. And what's your go-to at the Great Neck Diner? You got to have a go-to. It depends. No, it really depends. It's like breakfast. It depends what mood I'm in. The other day I had a waffle. This morning I had I had scrambled eggs. So right. it really depends if I need carbs or, or you know, or, or not. You but, watch your weight, Tom. Yeah, not, you know, oh. during COVID, I lost like 25 pounds because I, I wasn't going out so much. Jeff Cole lost 100. Yeah, no, you did better than me. I, I, well, I, I'd be, any I'd be, I'd be, weight, I'd be pretty. Uh, you couldn't lose 100 pounds. No, I'd my be brother. in trouble. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be, they, they'd have me ready to. We'd be have to wonder off. what happened to my man. But, 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 you know, prices. You mentioned eggs. Everything's gone up. So even a lot of the diner prices are up. But, but yeah. still still more affordable than going yeah. to some of the restaurants oh. and you know some of the diners have have and you know bring people back have been offering a lot of specials you know where for x amount of dollars you don't not only get the main course but you get the coffee you get dessert you get a salad or a soup you know so it makes it, it effective it makes way. it effective yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. People get the whole thing but you know i'm starting to see more people back in in diners and restaurants i think people are Feeling a little more secure. You still got to be careful. I, I've got friends and people in the office that are getting yeah. COVID still. I mean, it's COVID's not going away. not going to go away. Probably never the will. The flu's not, never went away. And, but if, it, if the symptoms will be more like a flu, that's okay. So, you know, watch out. Be careful. I don't tell people what to do, but I whatever shots are there, I take them. Yeah. Because I think it helps. Uh, you just got to be careful. Listen, and staying healthy. I mean, listen, we we've never we it's not we just don't talk about it so much in this country and you know and i'm living proof of that if you live a healthier lifestyle if you figure out a way to work exercise into your routine that's my problem yeah i I exercise exercise these muscles (laughs) the other muscles i don't exercise them and you know my doctor tells me he says tom i just want you to if you're even not going to go to the gym Three days, four days a week, walk, walk, walk. 45 minutes to an hour. Not a lazy walk, brisk walk. A real walk. That's what, if you do that, you know, 
So. You keep your heart rate moving. You get your heart yeah. rate up and you do it three, four times a week. Right. You're going to change. Yeah. I mean, you could go to another level. I mean, you know, right. there's things where you can train. And, you know, the sauna is, is proving to be a really oh, wonderful. Oh, really? Yeah. I've never done that. I mean, I'm reading. Well, I shouldn't say never, but I I'm don't reading do it, yeah. things where, you know, there are some studies I saw that, you know, sauna 10 hours a, a week could, is going to, could, you know, wipe out comorbidities in your life by 50%. Really? This is, and again, again, I don't. I'm not a doctor, and again, but I've seen multiple studies that are showing this, and you're seeing it more. Social media is putting that out there more. Huh. Uh, this sauna, this what idea. A, what about the ice baths? What do you think of that? Well, Tommy, again, I, I'm afraid of cold water. I do want to do an ice bath. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm ashamed of myself because I want to do it. Because yeah. I follow this Joe Rogan, who's a big podcast guy. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, he started me on this this search of this sauna, and again, outside of him, you could read a lot about it. And he gets into, but I I can't even go to the beach in in. I'm a big beach guy, but I won't swim until August. I don't like <laughs> as an older man. I don't like the cold water. I can't do it. Yeah. And I see them. They get in. They, they get in. in I, yeah, I don't and get they're it. Jumping yeah, in. yeah, yeah, yeah. I may try it. Yeah. I'll call you. When, Let I'll me send know. you a video. Let me know. Let me know. I'll send you well, a video. I'm not sure about the video, but call me. <laughs> I'll be fully clothed. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Now, uh, social media, like I just tipped on that. You're you're into that, Tom? I mean, I know we're friends on Facebook, yeah. but do you like do you use social media in your free time? Do you look at it for things for enjoyment? Uh, well, limited. I mean, uh, you know, the reality is to communicate with the world, you have to be on social media. Yes. So uh, we do have through the office, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Uh, and I'll be honest, you know, folks manage that for me. Oh, I'm sure they do. Um, I, I don't do it a lot. I, I, um, <laughs> I could t You're tell a busy you this. Guy. Well, that's, that's part of it. The other part is they, they did have the, uh, I guess at one point we had different Facebook pages and, and then of course we had the campaign that went political right. time. Right. But anyway, the long and the short, I was on. I was on our Facebook. It was the government Facebook page, I think. And I got a message from a, a, a friend from high school who I hadn't heard from in, you know, 30, 40 years. It's awesome, right? Well, so I opened up the message uh -oh. and, and several uh, pictures of naked people came up. That's not nice. And then, and then the next day I got a message from the same person. If you were one of the folks that got a message from me on Facebook, that wasn't me. There wasn't but it was me. So, so my office said, you're not allowed to go on Stop Facebook opening, anymore. Stop opening things. So, so I, I don't. And then people started calling and saying, do you know there's naked pictures on your, on your controller Facebook page? So I, that made me a little gun shy. I get it. I get, a little yeah, gun listen, shy. But I do, look, I do look now and then to see, because, you know, some people will comment on our Facebook page or they may have a request say gee i tried to be in touch with your office right. i'm having a problem with my pensions and i always say to my staff you know did you follow up on that because right. you know for some people that's a prime way to communicate i mean look i'm still of the generation you know i, I still like yeah. to talk to people on the phone uh you know uh let alone email but but some folks their prime communication is you know is through facebook so so we, we do monitor the page uh, especially if someone's got a problem if that's how they want to reach us then we, we make sure we follow up with them and you said you i just heard you say you made a special page just during campaign season well because you can't you can't put political stuff on a on a government page okay you have okay. to keep it separate you have to keep so, it separate so we had like you know for last year denapoli 2022 uh campaign website what do you think the future of campaigning and social media is going to be like could be heavy no i well it certainly will will expand to continue um and the use of digital uh ads uh right you know uh we did a little bit of that. Well, I shouldn't say a little bit. We did we did more of it this time than we did four years ago because again, that's especially for younger voters. Sure. That's, that's the that's the way you're going to reach them. And it's you know from a cost perspective, it's more efficient oh, right. than paying for these big telephone buys. You know, uh, telephone television. television. You know, yeah. television buys. Nobody's uh, watching television anyway. Well, that's the other thing. Right? Nobody's watching. No, it. Not 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 like the old days. Well, in the old days, you had a couple of clear stations now, channels. Now now it's all over the it's place. It's everywhere. People are streaming. You know, it's a whole different thing so the digital uh advertising you know made some sense so i i think i think you'll see more of that i absolutely see more of that yeah i think that's cool i mean listen i, I get everything from social media yeah i mean me i mean i a lot well, of you're pleasure young and hip as opposed to me you know well, i'm so. not that young my brother but you're still hip <laughs> i try to be hip yeah well i'm chef cholo <laughs> listen tom thank you so much for spending some time with us today it was awesome you've uplifted 
the go crying, the walking. Uh, I don't think so. Rudder. I We've don't gone think from so. here to here in like 30 minutes. You <laughs> see what just happened here? Huh? No, we talked about a lot, and I'm just so, so happy for your success. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I continue to be a big fan, and uh, I will never eat swordfish again. Did I do that? Well, Did I, I just... might cheat a little bit. I've but, done it to but... other people. It's not the first time it's happened. I feel, I feel like you're my friend. I feel I have to tell you. I appreciate you it. You never whacked one of these things open. You wouldn't know. I That's sure have it. The size of your all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Brother, thank you so much. All I love right, you. Chef, all thank right. you. Thank Always you. success thank in the future, you. all right? You bet. Well, you're watching the Go Crying to Walk In podcast, and I'm Chef Cholo, and you already know. Thank you.